Hello fellow gamers, I'm Christopher Christman of Retro Game Network, and coming up next, a look at last week's retro video game news on the RGN Files for the week ending Saturday, October 27, 2018. In the RGN Files this week, a brand new homebrew title is currently in development for the Nintendo Game Boy platform. The program, entitled Invasion 1984, is a game currently in the development stages to bring a fresh shoot-em-up style title to the classic system. Based on photos of the development, it appears that this title may be based on a short story from the Battle Picture Weekly comic book series. Over in the United Kingdom, comic book stories of the same name were published by John Wagner, Alan Grant, and Eric Bradbury in the late 1970s. In this particular storyline, skeletal-looking alien warriors have invaded the planet Earth, bringing large cities to the brink of total destruction. Taken by surprise, mankind must dig deep to survive. Being created by a programmer from Mexico by the name of Oscar Alvarado, the game will be offering a variety of different enemies and extra-large boss battles, and will offer a variety of customizable options. We have also taken notice to the Acclaim logo that appears both on the title screen as well as on the simulated box art, and we at Retro Game Network have reached out to find out what their connection is to the game. There's currently no word on when Invasion 1984 would be finished, nor has any distribution method yet been announced. This past April, Retro Game Network reported on a new NES homebrew title called Alfonso's Arctic Adventure, which is based on the Eskimo Bob Flash cartoon series, originally published on Newgrounds and was popular during the early 2000s. In the game, you control the character of Alfonso, who is on a quest to find Bob, and because of his taste for fish, must collect as many as he can during the process. During the game, you will come across three characters that can also help you with their special abilities. According to the Gillian Brothers, who are the creators of the Eskimo Bob series as well as the NES titles, programming has been completed, with a prototype cartridge being tested on actual NES hardware, alongside of various NES clone systems. The only clone console found to be incompatible with the game was Hyperkin's Retron 5. A Kickstarter campaign has been initiated as a method of obtaining funding for both producing the physical media as well as materials, including boxes and manuals. The crowdfunding has proven successful, earning more than needed after just a few days. A pledge of as little as $9 Canadian will get you a ROM image of the game, while a minimum $49 Canadian pledge will get you a physical cartridge. The funding period will end on November 15th, with the games beginning the shipping process in April of next year. The recently founded Intellivision Entertainment has officially announced their upcoming Amico console. Earlier this year, a stake in Intellivision Productions was purchased by video games live creator Tommy Tellerico, who bought the stake from the estate of the late Keith Robinson. Unlike other mini throwback consoles that have been recently released, the completely redesigned Intellivision Amico is slated to be a brand new console altogether, with a combination of modern conveniences with a retro inspiration. According to the company, all games published will be exclusive to the system, be ESR be rated E10 plus or lower, and feature controllers that offer a new touchscreen that is reminiscent of the original Intellivision controller. The games will be complete and will not require additional purchases to unlock certain areas or features. At the launch, the Amico will include several built-in reimagined and pre-installed Intellivision classics alongside of over 20 games, including reimagined industry classics and new exclusive titles via the Intellivision online store. The Intellivision Amico is slated to be released on October 10th of 2020, also known as 1010 2020. The console is estimated to cost between 149 and 179 US dollars, with games typically costing no more than 8 US dollars. And finally this week, Screaming Villains, alongside of Limited Run Games, have announced a new port of the 25th Anniversary Edition of Night Trap. Originally released for the PlayStation 4 and PC platforms last year, with a Nintendo Switch port earlier this year, the companies have announced that the game will be coming to the PlayStation Vita within the next week. Plus, for the first time, the original Sega CD Red Banner artwork will be used, as opposed to the second version of the art, or the newer recreation. Limited Run stated on Twitter that collectors have been requesting that variant since the very beginning, and that they have used cover scans from several regions as a way of restoring the original art. The new Vita port will coincide with the release of the 25th anniversary edition of Double Switch. In a strange method for a Vita game through LRG, the title will be offered on a pre-order basis just like the upcoming Double Switch, but it has not yet been confirmed as to the length of the time that pre-orders will be made available. There is also no word on what the cost would be, nor if any special features or extras would be included. The pre-order window for Night Trap on the PlayStation Vita, as well as Double Switch on the PS4 and PC platforms, will begin on Friday, November 2nd at 10 a.m. Eastern. 
That's it for this week's edition of the RGN Files. For those listening on VGM on FM, please stay tuned. There'll be more music coming up shortly. For complete details of any of this week's stories, visit RetroGameNetwork.com. And don't forget to check us out on our social media outlets, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at RetroGameNetwork, and on Twitter and Twitch at RetroGameNet. For the RGN Files, I'm Christopher Christman. This week's news story is provided by the following. British Comic, Destructoid, Jimatsu, Indie Retro News, Intellivision Entertainment, Limited Run Games, Retro Magazine, The Retro Room. You're listening to VGM on FM on 107.9 WRML. Now, back to the music. <laughs> 